Good everyone. Good morning, everyone. We are uh, on part three in this series of classes. Uh, so uh, we started really with the idea of halakha ke'ila and modern questions. We spoke about uh, many interesting issues that we already saw that started uh, really at the time of the Tanaim and Amoraim, and then later on in the time of the Rishonim and Geulonim and Rishonim. And the last thing we saw last time was the idea that took place uh, in France, in Spain, uh, with the Bala Akeda, with trying to figure out a way to control uh, the Jewish men, the single ones, and to institute prostitution homes in different communities and allocate budget for it. And we saw the um, idea of Yitzchak Arama, Bala Akeda, who was uh, obviously opposing it. And uh, we saw a tshuva from the Rambam in the 12th century that, no, uh, there is a way to do it, there is this, there is that. And that's what we did last week. Today, we are going to deal with another very interesting issue that really the Gemara is already dealing with and we will obviously explore it together. So let's go to the source yes, sheet. Sorry. And it says the following. I took the I video off. I feel that I'm, everyone is muted. Okay, so. What we're going today to deal with today is really Yahas Chazal, the attitude of our sages and the community, meaning the rabbinic institution and the community as, as, a, as an entity, Le'adam she'eno yachol lishlot b'itzro, to a person who cannot control his inclination. Now, I'm obviously not talking about good inclination, I'm talking about bad inclination, okay? Someone who cannot control his bad inclination. By the way, I will just tell you one thing. I, will, I made it as a little bit of a joke, but there is, um, there is a case when a person cannot control his good inclination and we also need to intervene. Uh, does anyone think about a good example for that? There is one that's like very simple. Overpaying charity. Tzedakah. Tzedakah. Tzedakah, very good. When uh, there is uh, the idea of charity, when someone gives too much money and then he can fall into poverty. So then we need to stop him. Or if someone uh, you know, wants to say, even if he's going to say, all my money is going to, you know, I'm giving all my money now to somewhere. So that's Tzava Mechaim. But basically in charity, we need to, we can intervene sometimes, which is an interesting thing. Okay. So let's go and see what the Gemara has to say. I think we'll be pretty surprised. So the Gemara says, in Kiddushin Daf Mem Amudalef, Amar Rabbi Eli Hazaken, Im Ro'e Adam Sheitzro Midgaber Alav. If someone sees that um, you know his inclination basically is too overwhelming, he can't control it. He can't subside it. He can't control it. He can't channel it. He just what can he do? Yelech lemakom sheein makirim oto. He will go to a place that he's not being recognized. Ve'ilbash shchorim, and he should be dressed with black. Ve'itkase shchorim, and he will cover himself with black. Ve'yase k'mo shelibo chafetz, and he can do whatever his heart desires. Ve'al yechalel shem shamayim befarhesya, and he should not violate or desecrate um, Hashem's name in public. So what do we have? Rabbi Eli says basically like that. If someone comes to the rabbi, okay, and says, rabbi, I can't control myself. I need to do something that it's inappropriate. So I don't know if the rabbi should tell him that, or maybe he should just show him the Gemara in Kiddush and Dafmem and says to him, look, dressed up with black, cover yourself with black, go to a place that you are not being recognized and do whatever you want. Just don't do it in, in public. So people, what? People will say it's maybe muta, or people will start demeaning other things. So, that's what you basically say to a person. Now that's obviously very surprising. You would think that a person like that will come to the rabbi and the rabbi will tell him, you know what, let's learn together Mesilat Yesharim, you know, let's learn uh, Shari Tshuva, let's, uh, let's do something together. No, the rabbi should give him a pass and you know, and he does whatever he does wherever he is and then he comes back. Now that's, that's an interesting statement. So the Gemara is definitely not happy with that. And the Gemara says, Aini, how can you say such a thing? Vehatania, and there is a brighta that says, Kol shelo chas al kvod kono, raui lo shelo bala olam. If someone does not have mercy 
um, on the honor, on Hashem's honor, it's better for him not to be born. Vemahi, what does it mean? Rabba, third generation Amora, says, Ze hamistakel bekeshet. Rav Yosef, who was his bar plukta, who was his uh, debater, Omer, ze aover avera beseter. So obviously we have a contradiction, at least according to Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef says what? That if someone makes avera beseter, it's what? It's ra'uy lo shelo yavo la'olam. It's better for him that he was not born. So how can you say that if someone wants to uh, commit a sin, he can do whatever he wants, just it needs to be beseter. But even Basetar, it's still Avera, which means the tension in this paragraph in the Gemara is that it seems to be the first idea is, oh, you can do whatever you want, just not to do it in public. But what does it mean you can do whatever you want when you don't do it in public? We have Rav Yosef, and also, by the way, it makes sense. Well, what does it mean? I can, I, the, only, the only concern I have is that what people would say, obviously, we need to have more than that. So the Gemara says, לא קשה, ה דמציקאיף ליצרי, ה דלומציקאיף ליצרי. So in a case that he can still control his inclination, obviously, and if he's doing that in private, so it's still a problem. But if he cannot control his, uh, his inclination, so then he can go somewhere else that he's not being recognized, should be dressed with black, will cover himself with black, and then he can do whatever he wants. So now, Rashi says, Ilbash Hori, Shelo ire at smo bichvodo, Ulai irach levavo bekach. So, according to Rashi, Rashi says, What? Why should he dress with black? Because it's very undignified uh, clothing and it's somewhat of humiliation in dressing in black. And maybe his heart will soften and then he will change his mind. So according to the first part in Rashi, basically what I'm telling this guy who comes to me and say, Rabbi, you know, I would like to commit a sin. Before I tell him, okay, you have a pass, you can do whatever you want. I try to what? To give him a suggestion that will help him to avoid this issue. Because if he will dress with black, will cover himself with black, he will do things that what? That will create some kind of a break between his the uh, desire and the action itself. So I create some kind of a, of a break. It's like, you know, in, in one-on-one psychology, you know, you tell us a person that has uh, anger issues, you know, before you get angry, count until 10, okay? So the same thing here, you know, this Jew comes to me and says to me, you know, I would like to commit a sin. I tell him, you know, count until 10. And while you're counting, you know, dress in black, cover with black, and then see what's going on. However, says Rashi, Vegam im yechta. But also, even if he will commit the sin, which means my suggestion to him did not work. He put himself in black clothing and he covered himself with black and he went somewhere else and he still has this desire. Ain Adam no ten lev. No one will pay attention to him committing those sins. Why? Lefisha eino chashub beinehem. This is an amazing th thing that Rashi says. Rashi says, and, and I want you to understand also that um, I cannot not take into consideration Rashi's uh, environment, atmosphere, background, history. We're talking about the beginning of the Crusades, You're talking about tremendous pressure from the church. And uh, you have Jews who sometimes need to do things. And Rashi is basically saying two things which is so realistic. Rashi says, look, what the Gemara is saying is like that. You have a person who has issues and he comes to the rabbi and we tell him, dress up with black. Why are we saying that? In order to achieve two goals. One, to really prevent him from doing it, which is really the ultimate goal. We try to avoid this issue. However, if it doesn't work, and he goes to a different city and he does whatever he does there, no one will pay attention. Why? Because A, no one knows him, and B, when they see someone who is dressed in black and covered with black, yeah, by the way, please don't have any modern connotations, okay? I'm talking about back then, okay, so he dressed with black and he's covered with black, 
So no one pays attention to him. Why? Because it's probably a miscan or maybe he's a homeless or maybe he's just a poor guy. No one will pay attention, which means his transgression will not affect the public. So now this is the minute to stop for a second, not for questions, but for a summary. It seems to be that when a person has a tremendous inclination, the Rav can tell him, in, and the Rav sees that he can't stop him or her, he should give him a suggestion to try to help him to avoid the issue. But if it doesn't work, the Rav needs to make sure that at least this transgression will not affect the community. Which means basically, I can look at that in both, in both ways. I can look at that if I want to be now very liberal, I will tell you, wow, look at that. The Rav basically is telling that person he can commit that sin. On the other hand, if I want to be more conservative, I would say no. The Rav is try trying to tell him, don't do it. And I'm giving you all the suggestions of not doing it. And I'm making sure that no one else get harm on the way, got affected by what you do. But if you cannot control it, do it in a way that you don't desecrate the name of Hashem. Now, this is a different level of intervention and a different level, which is very interesting. It's a different level of what? of what the rabbi can tell a person who tells him, I would like to commit a sin. So you see the balance already with Rashi between the individual's answer, what answer I give to that individual and how I still have in mind to protect the community, to protect the public from his transgression, which is really, I think a very interesting, interesting idea, but that's only Rashi's opinion. Obviously, we have other opinions as well. And there, for example, Tosfot. Tosfot says, And he can do whatever his heart's desire tells him to do. Who is Rach? Rabbeinu Hananel. So Rabbeinu Hananel, you are talking about the 11th century in Kiruan. Okay, so Rabbeinu Hananel is in uh, North Tfon Africa, yeah, North Africa. North Africa, it's South Africa, no, North Africa, maybe Algeria, but it's called Kiruan. And he says, Chas v'shalom sheutar lo la'avor avera. He says, God forbid, what, the rabbi is telling him you can commit a sin? The rabbi's job is to try to help you to avoid it. Ela kach amar rabi ilai, yegiat drachim, ve'a'achsanaot, u'levishat shchorim, so Rabbeinu Hanan says, unlike, he says, like Rashi, Rabbeinu Hananel was before Rashi, obviously. What Rabbeinu Hananel says, he says, no. Rabbi Eli never told the rabbi that he can tell this guy, oh, sure, no, you can do it, just do it in private. No, 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 no. We are telling that person, we are giving him a, a path to avoid the committing the sin. We are telling him, until he will dress in black, cover himself in black, will go somewhere else. And until he will commit that sin, it will be so much time between the desire and the sin. So we hope that his desire will subside and he will be able to control himself, but never ever that the rabbi will tell him to do whatever he wants. Now, what's the problem? You know what? What's the advantage and what's the disadvantage in his perush? If someone has an answer, please unmute and then mute again. Is my question clear first? Just nod your head first that if my question clear. What's the advantage and disadvantage in Rabbeinu Hananel's opinion? He's looking for time. He's looking for some way that the person who wants to go out and have a McDonald's sandwich or whatever it is in a milkshake will, will think about what he's doing. You're going okay. to another city. You're, you're, you're I mean, if you're dressing in black, everybody will say, oh, this is a guy from the Orthodox community over in B'nai Brock. He's coming over here to this Arab village so he can eat a, a hamburger and milk and a sandwich. Oh, okay. I mean, so it's an first, advertisement. Okay, okay, just one second. The, the dressing black, it's not, a, it's not a monopoly of the Haredim, okay? And that's why I said beginning, no modern connotation. Uh, 
the, the, the way that they are dressed now in black, this is a, a modern thing. No, 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 I didn't mean that. I, did, I didn't mean that. If, if you look at the old pictures from 300 years ago, everybody was wearing these colored different garments. The Arabs in the area or the Muslims, whatever right. they were. So the and, thing and is... The, and, but, right. So the thing is, is that the advantage is obviously that the rabbi does not tell him to commit a sin. But what is the disadvantage in Rabbeinu Hananel's perush that probably Rashi fixed it? What is the disadvantage in Rabbeinu Hananel's perush? That he, that he could do the sin ultimately. Very good. Phil, the, the pshat in the Gemara is yeah. and he will do whatever his heart desires tells him to do, which means, according to Rabbeinu Hananel, the Gemara, uh, go back to the Gemara, feel very good, the Gemara should not say, V'yase Mashali Bo Chafetz. No, because by putting black, covering himself with black, and going to exile, he will not do what his heart's desires tells him to do. Exactly the opposite. What we say, like we say in Hebrew, Aikar Chaser Min Asefer. The main part is missing. Rashi, I think, I don't know if he saw Rabbeinu Hananel's perush or not, but Rashi fixed it. He says, look, it's true. We are trying to give him a way to avoid the sin. However, even if he does it, which means even if we failed, we, the rabbis, from stopping him from committing the sin, he will not affect anyone else. So that's the idea, according to Rashi and Rabbeinu Hananel. Rabbeinu Hananel could not believe that we as rabbis can tell someone to commit a sin. Rashi says, also, I agree with you, Rabbeinu Hananel. I agree that we will try to do whatever we can, but you know what? Sometimes someone's desire is stronger than the rabbi's speech. Surprise, surprise, okay? When a person wants to do something, the rabbi can talk from now until tomorrow about the parsha, and he doesn't care. He wants to do his sin. So what we need to take care of as rabbis is that he's going to commit a sin. We can, sometimes even a rabbi needs to know he can't control it. He can't stop it. As parents, we know it. As grandparents, we know it. As rabbis, we also know it, at least some of us. Okay? And the question is now as rabbis, we also still have responsibility. To whom? Not to that person anymore. What can we do? We tried. But we need to make sure that the community as a whole will not be affected by the action of that specific individual. Now you can understand the tremendous effect and the implications for such a Gemara, modern times. Now, by the way, many of the people who wants to commit a sin uh, don't necessarily come to the rabbi to ask for uh, what to do. But if, if they come, or if a rabbi see that there is a problem in a community and he try to talk to that person, to change his behavior and his ways, and he doesn't. So then the question is also, is the rabbi needs to tell that person, you know, can you please do it in, in private or can you please do it in, in different cities that you are not being recognized because I don't want you to affect my community? Now, this is a question. We're not going to deal with that right now. So we'll take questions later on. Let's continue on with the social. So the Gemara, so the Maharsha who lived in the 16th century, also adopted the idea of Rabbeinu Hananel, which is very interesting. And he says, the Levishat Shchorim, V'yichaseh Shchorim, that he needs to be dressed in black and cover himself in black, al kochach eino ela mishum delechuf yitzro bedavar hameshabro velo yichta klal. Which means, according to the Maharsha, he adopts the idea of Rabbeinu Hananel. And he says that by dressing in black and covering himself in black, it will force his inclination, will break it, and he will not commit the sin. So, you know, it's like almost, it's like a, it's like a kamea, okay? It's like a, what do you call the kamea? I forgot, uh, whatever, it's like a, a lucky charm, okay? If you're dressed in black, you put yourself in black, you will not commit a sin. Okay, you know, ashreya ma'amin, praiseworthy is the believer. I know many people who are dressed in black, covered in black, and they do whatever they want, okay? So the idea was, at, at least the idea in Rabbeinu Hananel's 11th century and Maharsha 16th century, that basically you cannot do whatever you want, 
when you are dressed like that and behave like that. However, the Ritva, Rabbi Yom Tov Ben Aderet, 14th century, says the following, Ve'yasem ha'shalibo chafetz, perush, betzina, we can do it in private. Ve'al yechalel shem shamayim b'faresia, and you should not desecrate Hashem's name in public, במקומות שמכירים אותו, in places that he can be recognized, שהוא נכבד, when people will know that he's a, a special person, he's a מכובד person, so in places like that, he shouldn't do that, he should go to a different place that no one knows him. Why? Because if they know him, אבי חילול השם. Now take a look. הלכך, therefore, עדיף לה, כיוון דלומצי קייף ליצרי כדי מפרש ועזיל. He says, I understand because he cannot control his inclination, he cannot force his inclination not to commit the sin. He should go and do it in private. So we see that the Ritva accords with whom? With Rashi, against Rabbeinu Hananel. And he brings the Yerushalmi, Mefaresh ve'yaase, what does it mean, ve'yaase, מה כמו שליבו חפץ, מלשון ועשותם רשעים, ולא משמעך היא בגמרא דילן כדמוכח הכאה. This is beautiful. Why it's so beautiful? Because now we have a machloket between the Yerushalmi and the Bavli, and also that affects the opinions of Rashi and Rabbeinu Hananel. I will explain. According to the Yerushalmi, when the Gemara says, ויעשה מה שליבו חפץ, the Yerushalmi interprets ויעשה as what? Not and he will do, but לעשות רשעים, it means what? To force someone to do something. Which means, according to the Yerushalmi, by dressing in black and by covering yourself in black, you will be able to do what? To force your heart not to do what you desire. Whose opinion is that? Rabbeinu Hananel. Rabbeinu Hananel also, we, we said that the disadvantage in Rabbeinu Hananel's perush was that it says, and he shall do whatever his heart's desire tells him to do. And it says, no, la'asot does not mean to do, but to force, to overcome your inclination, which is a very interesting terminology of la, the word la'asot. And therefore, Rabbeinu Hananel, who was obviously also influenced by the Yerushalmi, he was one of the first uh, Geonim Rishonim that basically um, uh, used the Yerushalmi. He basically says, in order not to say that the rabbi can tell someone that he can do whatever he wants, he says, no, exactly the opposite. The rabbi will do everything he can to help this guy to overcome his inclination. Rashi, who didn't see the Yerushalmi at all, by the way, even when Rashi quotes the Yerushalmi, he probably didn't see it. He saw someone else bring the Yerushalmi and he saw it or he heard, but I don't, according to the research, Rashi probably never saw Yerushalmi. So the thing here is that Rashi looks at the Gemara and he says, look, it says, and he will do whatever his heart's desire want to do. So the only issue that I have, the only concern that I have is what? is to make sure that there is no desecration of Hashem publicly and we don't affect the community. Okay, so now, before I will stop for a few minutes, um, I want you to see the Meiri. Rabbi Benachem Meiri in 14th century in Provence says the following, אבל כל שאינו יכול לחוף את יצרו, and if someone cannot control his inclination, Noach lo sheyaase beseter, it's better for him to do something in private. Ve'al yechalel shem shamayim befares, and he should not desecrate the name of Hashem in public. Ve'hu she'amru, and that's what the rabbi says, im ro'e adam she'yitzro mitgaber alav, if a person see, sees that, one, that his inclination basically overpowers him, yelech lemakom she'en makirim oto, so he should go to a place that he's not being recognized, vidbash horim, ויתכסה שחורים, אחר שהוא במקום שאינו מקפיד על כבוד עצמו. Because he does not really respect himself, so no one will respect him. And take a look at the lashon, at the language. ושמא, אז ייכנע לבבו. What is שמא? Perhaps. 
unlike Rabbeinu Hananel and the Maharsha that says, oh, for sure, he will be able to overcome his inclination. The Meiri says, Shema, maybe, very much like Rashi. We try. Ve'im lo, he cannot be kach. And then if he cannot force his inclination to subside and not to commit the sin, now, what does it mean, Can he eat on Yom Kippur and, uh, and eat a ham with a milkshake on Yom Kippur that falls on Shabbat? Do whatever he wants. So Meiri says, which the Gemara did not say, He says, the, the pass, that we give to someone to do whatever he wants, it's not to do whatever he wants to violate the Torah, but only dvarim mechoarim, things that are ugly. Now, what does it mean, things that are ugly, we should discuss, obviously. because he does not respect himself, so because we allow him to do things that are not, that they are ugly, he will do that and he will come down and he will not, it will not lead him to violate prohibitions. And there is no desecration of the name of Hashem because he's not being recognized. There are many people who you know, are not respected in the marketplace. Now, the Meiri is making a revolution here. I hope that I'm not the only one who is excited with this Meiri. The Meiri is basically saying three things. A, we try to stop the guy, but you know what? We might not succeed. This guy, like Rashi, he might commit this sin. So that's one thing. Second thing, he is saying what? He is saying that the idea of allowing him to do things the things, the dvarim, are not whatever this guy wants. He does, just he has an inclination to do something mechoar. Now, what is davar mechoar? Give me an example of something that it's mechoar. So, I don't know, it's not isur. It's not something that it's prohibited, but it's something mechoar. So, for example, what can be something mechoar that this guy wants to do and we will allow him to do? You started uh, talking about going to going to going to visit prostitutes in Los Angeles in, in Las Vegas. Is that is that what we're talking about? Oh, Sexual okay. problems? No, no. That that's uh, unfortunately it's a good example. Not unfortunately because you said it. It's unfortunately it's a good example of the var mechoar. Okay, and that relates to the last shiur. We have someone who wants to go to a, a, a prutza, a prostitute. It's the var mechoar because I don't know. There is let's say there is no isu. Okay, she's not married, she's not Jewish, she's not this, she's not that, even though I'm not sure, even if she's not Jewish, it might be any sur love, but whatever. Let's say it's Davar Mechoa, so there he needs to go somewhere else in order to do whatever he wants. So, Rabbi, are you talking about people that are clinically sick and can't control no, 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 themselves? No, 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 no. Or are no, you no. talking about people who decide, you know, it's Thursday, I've had a hard week, I, I need to do something unusual. Either yeah. I'm going to get drunk or I'm going to fly to Las Vegas and second, nobody will know second. I'm there. Second option, exactly. Second option. We're not talking about sick people. Sick people, that's a different thing. We have different laws for them. Yes, Phil. I, first of all, you're going to a man who's gone to his rabbi for help. So we're not dealing with a murderer or a rapist uh, or somebody who wants to do something that's against the law. So basically, the rabbi is trying to get him to settle down. And, and I think there would not should not be a machoikus about the color of his clothing, it's, you take that, I would think, as meaning uh, dress casually and don't make yourself known. But if you want to go to see a burlesque show, wish you wouldn't go, but don't show off. It's okay. not, there's a different degree of exposure there. If I can okay. use one. Very good. So Dvarim Mechoarim can be not exactly what I would say inappropriate things, but you know what, I would say uh, uh, a behavior that in our community is not exactly accepted. So you go somewhere else when you are not being recognized and you affect nobody be beside yourself, but look what the Meiri does. And this is a, where the Meiri gets it exactly, it's not sure. 
I can understand where he's coming from because the Gemara says he can do whatever he wants. What does it mean he can do whatever he wants? But the rabbi can tell someone, okay, you can eat on Yom Kippur just because you want it. Obviously not. So we understand where the Meiri comes from. But the Meiri is also giving us a psychological analysis by allowing this guy to loosen up a bit. And in a way that he doesn't affect anyone else, it will allow that person to what? Not to violate real prohibitions, which edu now I'm talking educationally. This is an, an educational revolution because we know that mitzvah goreret mitzvah ve'avera goreret avera, you know, and if you will do one bad thing, you will do a different thing and it will lead you to do even terrible things and all of that. The Meiri says, and, and, um, and Phil, I think um, that's a good suggestion, what you suggested, and Harold, that's why I'm, I'm saying we're not talking about a person who is sick or something like that. It's a person that had a hard week, or you know what, he, it was just too much in yeshiva, okay, or it was just too much, and he wants to go to a bar and to just drink his night all day long to drink, and to get drunk and then to go to sleep. He doesn't want to harm anyone, God forbid, but if he will do it in Yerushalayim and someone will see him, they will say, ah, you know, Mr. X becomes drunk and he ter terrible, whatever. But if he goes to Vegas and whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, okay, or in the bar. So back then you just, you do it whatever you want to do there and then you come home and you are recharged. Now, as an educator, you look at this Meiri and you ask yourself, is he naive or is he a revolutionary in terms of education? When you see, and this is, by the way, this is one of the major questions when you talk about, when you talk about education to especially teenagers, young adults, you know, they come and say, look, Rabbi, there is just too much or the religion is too rigid. Or, you know, the, the um, societal expectations for me are too tough. And I just, you know, I, I just want to have a, a, a Shabbat off. Not, I'm not going to violate Shabbat. I just want to be at the beach. I'm going to have a tent. And I just want to be there. I don't want to go to a minyan. I don't want to dive in. I, don't, I just want to stay there. I'm not going to violate Shabbat. Not anything prohibition. I just want to clean my head. Okay, this is not the var mechoar. But I'm saying just to get away from the structure. What the Meiri says, which is education, it's something that we need to think. I'm not suggesting to support it. I'm not suggesting to oppose it. I'm suggesting to, for all of us to think about. What the Meiri is talking about, what we will call in modern terminology, too much stress. The structure is just like, you know, it's like on my vein, must speak, I need to get out. And the question is, you go to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, I want to get out for Shabbat. I want to get out for the weekend. I want to get out for a week. What can I do? Or, or, or I want to do A, B, and C. I know it's not exactly appropriate, but can, in a way, what the Meiri says, he says, I recognize this. I recognize that a person sometimes, not exactly that it's good for everyone, but someone, he or she needs a break. So it's better to give them a break in something that it's allowed, but it's not exactly the best thing. So they will not violate other things, which is when you think about it, educationally, religiously, rabbinically, psychologically, everything with Lily, okay, in the English, uh, in the English vocabulary, I would say that there is what we call in Hebrew, omek machshavti chinuchi. There is a tremendous depth in terms of education and understanding religion and understanding people. Not everyone can live in a structure, in a rigid structure. Quicker we understand it, I think more people stay in the fold. Now, that's just my thought. I'm not, again, it's thinking. The problem is also we know, because I don't want to play naive. Sometimes when you loosen up things, things are breaking apart, which is also something to consider. You know, we live in a very modern society and when you, and now you can understand the dispute between rabbis, that something has nothing to do with halakha. It's about how you form the next generation. Some rabbis will say, okay, loosen up a bit because we are losing people. 
because if we will not allow them to do A, B, and C, they will violate prohibitions and they will do this and that and the other, and we will lose them. And some other rabbi says, okay, we can lose them, but we're going to maintain the core and we need to be even more rigid so no one else can live and we can cement the structure. Sometimes you, when you listen, and I'm not talking about the bashing, you know, this rabbi bashing, this guy, this guy bashing, I'm not, I'm not interested in bashing. I'm interested in the, in the claims, in the te'anot. And if I don't hear a te'ana, if I don't hear an opinion, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not, I don't care about if someone is young, old, or if he has a te'ana and it's substantiated with the proof, I can hear it. So you see in many of the debates between different rabbis from left, right, middle, center, whatever it is, it's really not almost, it's not about halakha almost anymore. There is a sense of halakha, but it's not the question is the, is the chicken is kosher or not. It's about hashkafa. It's about how things can affect the generation, how things can affect the future generation and how things can affect our, the future of our movement, the religious Zionist movement. And I think it comes, I mean, this Meiri obviously didn't talk about it, but I can derive those things from the Meiri. Because the Meiri says we are allowing this guy to do things that are mechoarim. Now, I don't know exactly what is under this uh, category of mechoarim, but I can know that it's not prohibitions, but it's not something that I expect that guy to do. And I will allow him or her to do it, so they will not violate other prohibitions, and I will keep them in the fold, and I recognize the fact that sometimes people need a break, which is 14th century Provence. That's an interesting thing. Paul. What was going on then in Provence? Well, one second. One, so, second. Hell, so, one, hell, one second. Oh, sorry. Just there were hands. So, Paul. We can't hear. Paul, you need to unmute. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's not that um, somebody's coming to the rabbi. It's the other way around. Imro er adam. There's an outreach issue, not to ignore the person who's not behaving in the way we expect him. And you shouldn't ignore him. You should consider how to, what's best to go to meet with him. Imro er adam. No, imro er adam. If a person sees himself, that his inclination is overcome him, so then he will go to whatever. But we need we the rabbis needs to know it it's not that the person i mean you are talking about an educated person who knows the gemara okay okay it's not like the rabbi sending an email to the entire congregation and says to them, look if you see that your evil inclination is overcoming you you need to dress in black wear in black go to a place that you are not being recognized and do whatever you want no, no i didn't mean that i didn't mean that i'm saying if there's someone in the community that you know is behaving differently to what one would expect you shouldn't ignore it, uh, oh. not you. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. And that, uh, that's, that message doesn't, is here. Okay. Got you. Okay, good. Harold? Yeah, so I just want to, on the one hand, the problem with the Meiri is that the, the language of the Gemara does talk about chait. So that, that's one issue. But it seems like the Chiddush of the Meiri, I mean, he's talking about to some degree sublimation. In other words, he was three, 400 years before Freud. But he's describing, perhaps, we can infer a, a basic Freudian concept where we sublimate the person's desire that he cannot overcome into a different type of behavior, into a different type of activity that does not involve actually a sin, but involves other. And so it's uh, quite fascinating that, and I think we see this a lot, with not just the, the in, in the Gemara, but the Mephorshim, we find them that they were hundreds of years before modern psychological uh, uh, thinkers in this regard. That's very interesting. Thank you. Um, very good. Yes, Elvin. Unmute, Elvin. I can't hear you. Elvin, can't hear yeah, you. Now? Yes. How do we define, and uh, you alluded to it, but how do we define where, um, what is allowed, what isn't allowed? In other words, let's say I say, you know, I have 51 weeks, I kept Shabbos. The Shabbos, I want to go to uh, watch the Super Bowl game down in, uh, at what point in time do you differentiate between one and the other? So the Be'iri says no prohibitions. 
everything that is a prohibition, you cannot do. I mean, you, what do you mean you cannot do? You can do whatever you want. But as a rabbi, I'm telling you, you can do mashalibo chafetz, only dvarim mechoarim, says the Meiri. Things that are not exactly appropriate, but they are not prohibited. So Super Bowl, no. no. So no. how do you define it? In other words, you as a rabbi may define it one way, and let's say somebody else, not a rabbi, will define it a different way. No, so we are talking about halacha. This person, according to the Meiri, does not want to violate halacha. And what we are trying to do is to keep him in the fold so he will not violate halacha. The only thing we are allowing him to do is, you know, go to uh, a different place and to do something that it's not against the halacha, it's just not appropriate. Okay, it's now I, I don't want to now bring uh, too many examples because I think people will start taking it and implement it in their lives, right? But uh, so that's not my purpose. But, uh, but the thing is, is that I can tell you the, the negative definition. The negative definition is you can do whatever you want in the structure of halacha. Now, if you will tell me, Rabbi, okay, I'm going to outsmart you. I want to go to the Super Bowl. I'm going to buy the ticket before. I'm going to go to a nearby hotel and stay there. I will have kosher food for Shabbat. I will have an onik Shabbat. I will have a malav and malka, sudash the sheet, Friday night dinner and Shabbat lunch and a dvar Torah that I prepared for every, for every meal. But on Shabbat morning, you know, I'll go daven early and we have, you know what? I arranged 10 Jews to be with me in the hotel. So we have a minyan and I brought a Torah. But between tefillah and, and the mincha, I'm going to be at the Super Bowl and I get the ticket before, I just go to this metal detector being checked by non-Jews, can I do that? Now we have a question, because halakhically you, you may not violate anything, but is that a davar mechoar? Is that exactly what we you want to do on Shabbat? That might be, by the way, fall into that, this category, Elvin, that you basically don't violate any prohibition, but at the same time, you're not doing something that it's so appropriate. So maybe then, maybe I can tell, you know what, Elvin, um, maybe you can do it in a place that no one knows you and everything. The only problem is if you go to a Super Bowl, it might not be so private, okay? Especially if they catch you on the, on the big screen, okay? So then uh, there might be an issue of uh, private versus public because if you are being caught on camera and you are being televised to, I don't know how many millions of people view, uh, watch the Super Bowl, so then, you know, people say, oh, look, look at Elvin, even though he put a Super, you know, a Super Bowl hat on his hat, on his head, you know, still I could recognize him. So I don't know exactly, but the definition for sure, at least on the negative side is you cannot violate any prohibition. Uh, okay, one more, Danny, I think you raised your hand. Yeah, it seems to me we're talking about the Ramban's idea of nivul uh, bershut Torah. So doing things like, you know, eating uh, way too much food, you know, being, being, uh, uh, watching the, the language isn't a appropriate language, doing things that are certainly would not be a Kiddush Hashem and not the way a you know, religious Jew should act, but not going beyond that. Okay, very good suggestion. So then he says, maybe Dvarim Echoarim is based on what the Ramban says in Parashat Kedushim, Kedushim, Vitem Kedushim, and he says, not to be naval b'rshut Torah, meaning not to allow yourself to do things even though the Torah did not prohibit it. However, I just want to say, very good suggestion, and I would just say that not everyone agrees with the Ramban, exactly. For example, Rashi does not agree with the Ramban and many others, and they say, what are you talking about? You know, don't start adding more things. You know, if the Torah didn't say that you are not, uh, not, not allowed to eat 10 uh, kilograms of steak, don't tell me that I can't do that, that if I do it, I'm not Kadosh. Okay, so some people are obviously disagreeing with the Ramban, but definitely it's a good example answering Alvin, um, in terms of what is not allowed. So according to the Ramban, for example, there is a better definition for sure. Thank you. Okay, so now let's go back to the source sheet. And then we have a surprise. The Gemara says, Dama Rabbi Yitzchak, Kola over Avera Beseter, Ki ilu dochek raglei shechina. So if someone commits a sin in private, it's like he's pushing away the divine presence. The land is the, uh, not the, the what do you call Hadom Raglaim? It's the um, footstool. Footstool, thank you. So the Gemara says, Amy, how can you say that? 
ואמר בי לה הזקן, אם רואה אדם שיצרו מתגבר עליו, ילך למקום שאין מכירים אותו, וילבש שחורים, ויתעטף שחורים, ויעשה מה שליבו חפץ, ואל יחלל שם שמיים בפרהסיה. So we see that what, that according to Rabbi Ila, you can what, you can be over עבירה בסתר. So how Rabbi Yitzchak can contradict what Rabbi Ila says. So the Gemara says, לא קשי, אהדה מציקה יפלה ליצרא, אהדה לא מציקה יפלה ליצרא. So the same, same answer to this קושייה. Now, that's interesting. Says Rashi, כאילו דוחק רגלי שכינה, אומר בליבו, he says in his heart, אין השכינה כאן. Because I'm doing that in, in private, so it means that like, I don't believe that God can see me, okay? למקום שאין מכירים אותו, אין דעתו גסה עליו, because when he is not being recognized, so he is not arrogant, ושמא יקל כוח יצרו, and perhaps he will be able to what? to subside the, the power and the desire of his inclination. וגם אם יחטא, again, Rashi is really consistent. He says, and even if we couldn't help him, and he's going to commit a sin, אין אדם נותן לב, no one will pay attention. לפי שאינו חשוב בעיניהם, because no one thinks that he's important, because no one knows him, וכן בלבוש שחורים, and also when he dressed in black, no one will recognize him as an important person. By the way, again, according to Rashi, I will just say that I'm not sure that he agrees with the Meiri, with, in terms of the prohibitions. You know, it seems to be the pshat is that he can do whatever he wants, but I, I don't know exactly how to reconcile. The matzika yifle le Yitzra veboteach al shu nechba baseter ki ilu doche karaglayim. Meaning, if he can control his desire, but he decides to do it in private. It's like he's saying, oh God, it cannot see me. Heichi delomatzi kaifel leitzren, where he cannot control his desire, tov lo betzinah mi paresia. It's better that he will do it in private rather than in public. So that's what Rashi says. Come to Oswald and says the following. Ve'yaseh ma shelibo chafetz, legamrei mashma, What does it mean, legamre? Completely. He can do whatever he wants. Now, that's uh, not exactly what the Meiri says. You know, the Meiri says in the 14th century in Provence, mash libo chafetz bedvarim she'en ba'em isur. Tosfot seems to be, says, do whatever you want. Ve'lo keperu shrach, and not like what I quoted Rabbeinu Hananel, בשילי פרק כמה דקידושין, ופירש שחס ושלום שהיה מתיר לעשות עבירה. רבינו חננל says, רבי אילה, never, it never crossed in his mind that he will allow a person to commit a sin. אלא דקי אמר, ידבש שחורים וילך למקום אחר, ללבישת שחורים ואכסנאות משברים ליבו, ולא יבוא לידי עבירה. ויכול לעשות מעכשיו מה שליבו חפץ, בוודאי אין יצרו מתגבר עליו. So he brings the opinion of Rabbeinu Hananel, but then he says, וסוגיה דשמעתה, and our סוגיה, אינו משמע כדבריו הכה. ובראש פטרא דמועד קטן. So Tosfot says what? Tosfot says, look, I, I, I don't know what to say, says Tosfot. We have two סוגיות that basically contradict each other. On one hand, I can understand that, you know, if someone does עבירה בסדר, we, we know that you cannot do עבירה בסדר. because they are, you are דוחק רגלי שכנה, you show that there is no providence, because God doesn't see you. But on the other hand, we send someone to do, commit a sin in private if he cannot control his desire. Now, I will tell you something that I thought about it, which um, I was a little surprised that Tosfo didn't say it, so maybe it's not true, or maybe I have uh, holes in my theory as well. I think that there are two subject matters here that we need to pay attention to. When I tell someone that he or she can go and commit a sin in private, what do I mean by that? I don't mean to say that God will not see you. Obviously, God sees you everywhere, private, public, that's not the issue. My issue is what? Is to protect others from your bad behavior. 
you already going to have your, meaning the issue for me, the way I see it, is not been Adam Lamakom, it's been Adam Lechavero, which now I have responsibility, meaning I try to help this guy not to violate Ben Adam Lamakom. I can't stop it. I told him to dress in black, to cover in black, to go and to exile. Hopefully he's, he will be able to overcome the evil inclination. I failed. As a rabbi, I failed. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. So basically my achrayut, my responsibility between Ben Adam Lamakom for this guy is gone. It's faded away. Now I still have responsibility to make sure that his bad behavior is inappropriate behavior or his sin will not affect others. Therefore, I send him into a private place. And maybe that's what Rabbi Yila says. What Rabbi Yitzchak was talking about is kol ha'over avera beseter. He's not talking about someone who, you know, cannot control his inclination. He can still control his inclination. He goes to a private place. Why? Because he thinks that what? God doesn't see me. Ah, so that's Ben Adam Lamakom. So if that's true, so then if he does it, and if he goes to a specific, um, if he goes to a private place and he what, he is going to hide. So then, because it's still under the category of what? Of Ben Adam Lamakom. So that's what I would like to suggest. I hope everyone is with me. It's just not your head that you are there. Okay, and uh, that's the way I thought about reconciling the issue. Now, obviously, Tosfo didn't think like me, okay? Um, so I'm not sure that what I said is, uh, is true, but I will say that I think this is a good way to think about it. Meaning, as a rabbi, I have a responsibility or responsibility. When you come to me with a question and say, Rabbi, you know, I have too much of a desire to do something that it's not so much appropriate. I need to try to help you first and foremost between Ben Adam and Amakom. Okay, I need to help you as a person, but after that, I need to help you not to violate something Ben Adam Lamakom. If I failed, I still have a responsibility Ben Adam Lechavero to make sure that your inappropriate behavior does not have side effects to people that are maybe on the border or maybe on the fence or maybe are looking and they say, ah, if, if, you know, if Mr. X is doing it, yeah, it's probably mutar and it's probably appropriate and it's probably everything is good. I need to protect the community that, you know, this, this idea of protecting the community is not a foreign thing to halacha. You know, we are getting closer to Hanukkah and one of the things that we find in Hanukkah, like what we find in other places is also the marit ein. What is marit ein? At least according to some of the explanations, is that you need to make sure that people are not suspicious that you don't do what you're supposed to do, right? That's why you need to have Hanukkiah in every, every place that you should have Hanukkiah. So people don't say, ah, you know, this guy does not light Hanukkah candles. So we have the idea of how your actions are being perceived by others. And therefore, I can't tell you, oh, you know, I'm going to uh, to do something in private. Yes, you can do something in private, but then if you can if you can control your inclination, it's really been Adam Lamakom, and then you are Dochek Agleishchina. So if I look here, I will just uh, finish up with Rashi, and we will keep this one for next time, Bezrat Hashem, which is an, an interesting subject by itself. But Rashi says, Mashi libo chafetz. Avera. He's not talking, by the way, and that Elvin goes back to what you said. Unlike the Meiri, Rashi says he can commit a sin. And because no one recognized him there, there is no Chilul Hashem. That's interesting. Who is Rashi's Rabbi? Who was Rashi's rabbi? Do you know? Anyone? No one? 
רבי יעקב בר יקר was one of them, and רבי משה הדרשן was one of them, his father was maybe one of them, and some people say that רבינו גרשום was also, he learned by רבינו גרשום. Now, somehow Rashi testified that he has some kind of a tradition from the Geonim, in name of Rav Hai Gaon. Now, Rav Hai Gaon, and this is why we need to know a little bit the history. Rav Hai Gaon passed away when? Just Google it, okay? 1038. He passed away in 1038. He was probably the last Gaon. He was the son of Rav Shrira Gaon. Rav Shrira was a Gaon for 60 years. And he appointed his son to be the next Gaon, the next Rosh Yeshiva after him. And Rav Hai Gaon was, uh, I think for 40 years, he was a Gaon, passed away in 1038. So the first third of the 11th century. Now, Rashi is almost a century later and he has this tradition form of Hai Gaon, of what? And the tradition is, V'yasemash Elibo Chafetz, רוצה לומר, בוודאי כיוון שלבוש שחורים, אני ערב בדבר, I can guarantee you, שאינו, בדבר, שאינו, בדבר שאינו חפץ מכאן ואילך בעבירה. That's an interesting thing. רב הייגאון says that by dressing in black, he will guarantee that this guy will not commit a sin. Now, this is an interesting thing. Now I want to show you something I don't know if that's the history of human nature, but Rav Haiga on 1038 says what? I can guarantee if this guy dressed in black, covered in black, and go to exile, he will not commit a sin. Rabbeinu Hananel, a few years later, says, I'm telling you he will not. He's not, he cannot guarantee it, but he says he not. Rashi says, nice try. Perhaps he will not do it, but you know what? There are many chances he will and we will allow it to him. Comes Rabbeinu, Rabbi Menachem Ameiri in the 14th century in Provence and says, you know what, he will. But we will just tell him not to do a prohibitions, only things that are inappropriate. So you see how things transpired and how things transformed from one generation to another. But really in conclusion, what I wanted to talk to you about because we are really talking about Kehila Halacha Moderna you see how the rabbis were very much aware of the needs of the individual. This individual wants to do something that it's inappropriate, that it's outside of what we will allow, or if it's really against the Torah law or rabbinic law, and we address, we, we are going to address it. We're not going to ignore it. Meaning there is a responsibility for the individual. And then if we can't help the individual from helping himself and we understand that he's not going to change his behavior and we are telling him to do it somewhere else, we basically um, uh, uh, show our responsibility to the community. Meaning what, how things that are being done by an individual can affect the public which is, by the way, uh, a very, very important topic uh, to us. You know, we have different individuals with different behaviors, with different practices. And when you have someone with a specific behavior or practice and he or she does it in their communities, you know, what is the responsibility of the rabbi to tell this person you know, I'm not going to condemn what you do or not condemn, or I'm suggesting to you to not to do or to do, but I'm telling, I'm asking you, please don't do it in public. Okay? Don't do it in public because, you know, it's going to affect the society or the community or the, or the congregation, whatever, in the wrong way, according to my vision. So this is a very, very uh, delicate and, and, um, and sensitive issue. Because with all due respect, you know, how do you know exactly how it's going to affect things? And, um, and you know, it, it can vary from, you know, dress code to the way you daven to, you know, all sorts of things. So many different things, little minute things to something that it's, uh, and by the way, I can talk about things 
that people do that are really not a violation of halakha. Leave alone things that are tricky in halakha or that they are under debate. So obviously we have serious issues to discuss and Bezrat Hashem next time I will uh, discuss a, a terrible situation for a rabbi. Uh, you, think, uh, you think that the rabbis don't need to deal with uh, difficult situations when I call it the lose-lose situation, which means whatever the rabbi is going to say, it's not good. Uh, I guess you probably can say, rabbi, whatever you're going to say, it's not good. But the thing is, is that in halakha, when it comes to halakha and the rabbi needs to make a decision between two bad options, uh, that's what we're going to discuss, Bezrat Hashem, next time. I'm not sure exactly when is next time. Maybe I think two weeks from now, three weeks from now. Uh, but I'll see you. I'll see you there, Bezrat Hashem. I also posted on the chat at the beginning of the shiur the link for the because some of you asked the question uh, the, for the midrash shiur tonight at 8 p.m. We're going to discuss uh, Dina's rape or not rape in Shem. That's what we're going to do tonight at 8 p.m. You got the link on the chat if uh, someone wants to have it. I think it's still on the chat. And I will wish all of you Shabbat Shalom and stay healthy and safe. Bezrat Hashem.